Hello, I'm Richard De Los Santos. Uh, I'm going to be talking about my GrowUp 5000 ES inverters and the settings that we use to optimize power usage in our home. Uh, the goal is to share to with other people what uh, what I would like to have seen when I first started using it. I know there were a lot of people online doing that, but uh, the more the better. And uh, and I'd like to share my ex uh, specific experience that I had with the inverters and the settings that I'm currently using now. Uh, this will be a part of the series of just sharing my experience with uh, implementing a solar system in my home. And um, some of it will be helpful, some may not be, but the idea is to make it so that uh, the threshold is lower for other people to do it. So uh, let's get started. To get started, hold down the enter button to engage the settings. In this first setting, it's the SBU mode, solar battery utility. Solar battery utility means it uses solar and battery, and if those are insufficient, it will switch to the utility. This is our common run mode that we use so that um, we can utilize the sun and the battery and only use the utility in the event that we actually need it. Utility mode runs exclusively off the utility or the grid without battery or solar. Soul mode is a setting in which the PV inputs and the battery power the house. At night, after the sun is set, the grid takes over, preserving the battery. This is a helpful setting during winter when you want to preserve the battery during the night in the event of a snowstorm or some other power outage. SUB mode is a setting in which the house is powered by the sun and the utility. In the event that the sun and the utility go out, the batteries will carry the load. This is helpful during events such as snowstorms, thunderstorms in the summer, um, potential power outages. This is a way of creating essentially a backup mode uh, for the house with the battery. Setting two is used to determine the maximum charge that the battery pack can support. It's uh, derived from some calculations within the BMS, if you're using a BMS as we are, and uh, really can't be changed when you're on lithium mode. But it's a combination of the max grid charge that's been assigned and plus the whatever PV there will be available. Setting three uh, is another run mode setting that determines if the inverters are operating as an appliance, as a UPS, or as a sort of generator uh, input. And so basically we're set up as an appliance. We're pulling off the grid. Setting four determines if the inverters will go into power saving mode, which means that the, if the load is low on the inverter, it will go into a dormant sleep state. We do not currently have this enabled, but I do intend to try to test it just to see if I can maximize my efficiency. Setting five assigns the type of battery that's being used. In our case, we're using a lithium battery pack, um, EG4, that we purchased from Signature Solar, and that uses a BMS that we then just plug into the inverter. So the other settings available for user-defined parameters are not relevant for us. Setting six is simply to indicate if you want it to restart and if overload occurs. Uh, we have this enabled because if an overload does happen and it restarts, it's probably likely not going to continue overloading because whatever caused the problem will have been disabled. Setting seven controls if you want to restart the inverters if there's an over temperature fault. In this case, it's disabled because if the system became too warm, there's probably something wrong that needs to be inspected. Setting eight is the target output voltage. In our case, we're using 240 volts. Um, we do have an external transformer which will split the 240 into two uh, 120 lines, but uh, I'll discuss that in a separate video. Setting nine uh, assigns the output frequency. In this case, 60 Hertz, which is a standard frequency in most American homes. Setting 10 sets the number of batteries you have. We have this set to four. Setting 11 is the maximum grid charge to the battery that the inverter can deliver. The one difference between this setting and the other settings is it is unique per inverter. In many of the other settings, once you pick change it on one inverter, all the inverters sync up to that same value. That's not the case for this setting. It does seem to be unique to the inverter. So we've assigned 15 to each inverter, but you could choose different output charge values. 
Setting 12 is the percentage battery charge that will result in the inverters switching to grid to carry the loads from the battery. Our value is set to 30%. Setting 13 determines the charge of the battery that will take over load from the grid when the battery is being charged. So if the battery is being charged up to 45%, once it hits 45%, it will start carrying the loads. Uh, that may mean the battery goes back down, but if there's solar, generally the solar charges up to 45, starts carrying the loads of the house, and then continues charging it. Setting 14 determines which source charges the battery, solar or grid. In CSO mode, solar is the priority, then grid. If sun were to go down, then the grid can charge it. But we restrict the time in which the grid can charge the battery to late at night. So this is not an issue during the day. OSO mode means only solar can charge the battery. This is helpful if you want to ensure that the grid does not charge the battery at all, depending on your time frame or how you've assigned it. But we use this sometimes, but generally use CSO. SNU mode allows both the solar and grid to charge the battery at the same time. We do not use this mode. Settings 15, 16, and 17 are user interface settings that we've set to our particular preference. Setting 18 allows for a bypass to line mode if the inverter is overloaded while in battery mode. Since we're using lithium batteries with BMS, settings 19 and 20 are not relevant to us. Setting 21 is the emergency cutoff charge of the batteries, which will force the inverters to charge the battery and push everything to bypass line mode so that the grid will support the, the loads. If there is no grid, it will try to default to solar. If there is no solar, then it'll just shut down. For setting 28, we just use the default value of one. The settings from 37 to 48 uh, relate to things such as timestamp, date stamps, uh, battery equalization, and other metrics and settings that are basically controlled by the BMS or are just the date and time. So those aren't really of any significance. Setting 49 determines when the grid can charge the battery. This is important because I like to keep the battery uh, charged up from falling into the emergency zone and I want to do that in the evening. During the day the solar will charge the battery, at night as the battery is discharging. When it gets too low or if it gets too low uh, early mornings I'd like to give it a little bit of a charge just to get it through to the sun. So I set this from uh, 1 in the morning to 4 in the morning but what this setting actually does 0104 will have it charge from 1 to 5 in the morning and it's because it charges from 1 a.m to 4.59 a.m. Setting 50 determines when the inverters can actually invert. The default setting is all the time. It uses the same time code as setting 49. The first two digits determine the start hour, the last two determine the end hour. Uh, I don't use this because uh, if I stop inverting, the power of the house goes off and this is a full house um, support. So I just leave it inverting all the time. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, and uh, if you're interested or want to know more, uh, please subscribe and like the video. My intention is to continue doing this and sharing my experience and what I've learned. Um, and I'm happy to dig into any specific details anybody's curious about. Thank you.